<clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Bantablet show for this Saturday afternoon, at least that is a, an afternoon where I am. So let's get started with some games. Who's challenging me? I have to... That's a little bit odd. Got this challenge like two times. Hmm. Okay. New opponent, Mapa... Pasqual. Nah, that's not right. Anyway, let's play a game there. I hope you do hear me all right. I had a technical issue with my microphone, but as far as I can see and um, hear, it should be okay. It would be good to get uh, an info there if everything is... Um, fine yeah this line is appearing in every single show at least once <laughs> and this time it's the very first game I'm going to exert some pressure on that um, pawn center I'm not really playing this right. I had problems in earlier games. I'm trying something new. I have not yet castle. Oh, yeah, this this time I will take. This would be a little bit strange if I couldn't exploit the dark squared weaknesses in this position. Let's get the knight to f5. Yes, yeah, so it would be good to know if my sound is uh, okay. Knight f5. I would like to play that. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. The, the issue that, that I had is um, that the microphone does have a very convenient mute button that um, is easily accessible and that quite a good feature, in particular in cases where, um, I don't know, yeah, the voice is failing, you have to <coughs> cough, something like that. And somehow this button is not working anymore. I can press it and nothing really happens. Some disturbance, not sure what disturbance means, like some odd sounds. I'm not sure I have to check this. Um, this, this thing only happened yesterday that the button stopped working. I can press Okay. Hmm. <laughs> it's working again. Work earlier today and yesterday. Okay. Um, let's see what happens here. Knight to d5. That I did not expect at all because c6 is a move that is totally on my agenda. A move that I like to play and I'm not seeing knight f4 as a huge achievement for white it's a little bit surprising or I'm just not able to understand white's idea I guess he will go to f4 Maybe he is somewhat irritated by the option to play g5. Aha, this one. Yeah, this is an interesting, interesting idea. I just thought that... Mm, no, probably not. 
not. Knight takes d4. I was thinking about this move. I can take the knight on d5. White takes f5. Bishop takes, rook takes is pretty dangerous. Pretty dangerous. If I take on d4, knight f6 check, queen, I can sacrifice the queen. Queen takes, rook takes, knight takes e2, double check, but the knight doesn't really get anywhere. Yeah, I probably have to take d5. I mean, it's not very, very nice. But... I don't know what else. Bishop takes f5 is also going to be very dangerous. Uh, but probably no choice. And now rook takes f5. Queen e3 check is also a pretty reasonable move. Well, what exactly do you mean with lack? Like a sound lack or a video lack or different different versions there are different types of lack versions is probably a wrong way to phrase it i'm going to take on f on c4 there's a question by dona reps 99 when will your course be on chess 24 i'm not quite sure what course you mean I have written, I don't know, 10 or so, it could be anything. Okay, now I don't want to play the rook here, really. The fight like Magnus, um, probably never, because it's a chessable course. At least I have never uh, heard of any plans to do that. The course, however, is on sale at the moment. So if you want to get it at Chessable, it is uh, available as a discount, the discounted course. Oh, I'm really down on time. I have to play quicker. Putting some pressure on d4. Rook d1 I can take. This is a bit of a pain. The position might not be so terrible, but I have 13 seconds. This is the main problem. I've given up the queen for some stuff. Mm, my position is fine. It's just that I won't make the time. I, he didn't do that all that well, but rook h2 mate doesn't even have a check here.
Yeah, so I managed to secure a draw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whew. This just was tough. I only recognized my time disadvantage very, very late in the game. It's like, oh, oh my god. So, um, who else is challenging me? Let's see. Sam Gamji. That is a character from Lord of the Rings, right? I guess so. Here, located in Romania. All my opening courses are on, on Chessable. So, wide range of topics. So, let's see what I can do here in this, um, in this opening line, the Rosolimo. I recently got into some problems in this line. I don't know. I kind of keep forgetting <laughs> my own analysis, the one that I did for the Fight Like Magnus course. It does include the... Rosolimo, of course. Maybe I should have played f5. So here, let's just develop. This I have covered. I think knight g1, knight h5 is part of the course. But I keep forgetting my own stuff. Really do. So, later today, there will be a new round of the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. I have not checked today's pairings. Maybe you can put me up to date what is in store today. I think Magnus is not playing. He played yesterday, so I wonder about the pairings. I think uh, Giri and Ferruja yet have to score a point, right? They lost all their matches. I'm not completely certain that is, that, that is true, but I think it, this is how it turned out. I absolutely should switch on the other chats. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, sorry for doing that so late. I now actually read the chats every every single one of them i only had um what on earth i mean i saw that idea but i thought knight takes e4 was the more serious threat yeah queen takes there was bishop f4 but this is just working i believe You know, with a little intermediate threat, queen b2, checkmate. And that should be the end of it in some way, because I'm winning a piece for not much. Yeah, guess so. Yeah, this I take, I don't have to. Can take with the bishop, huh? Yeah, probably just moving the queen away is a reasonable choice. Let's say to c7. Why didn't he take the knight with his pawn? Like here? It's pinned, the rook on d8. No, the rook on d8 here. Yeah. Okay, um, let me recapture. It's a piece. And the only thing that is slightly irritating is my somewhat weak king position. But the most important factor is just the material. Now, well, 
let's go here threatening bishop takes c3 which would trade queens and end probably white's hopes to get some kind of swindle going on yeah so now i'm reading all the chats on facebook uh on youtube on twitch and the one on chess 24 that i always uh, monitor closely but uh, now i have switched on all the other chats as well so feel free to send comments questions whatever you feel yeah it's indeed difficult to see how white should uh, pose some problem here bishop takes you three is just pretty awful to to face now playing iron bar why not does that actually start the game or did i not click correctly let's try that again huh what's going on here <laughs> i can try this Ah, now the now the game has started. There's a bit of a lag, right? So let's play c5. Um, pawn on a paid pawn to a3. I could still take on c3 because the queen on e1 is hanging. Then okay, f3. Interesting. Um, I don't mind three or five minute. Both is fine. d5 i'd like to open up the position here as quickly as possible after f3 has weakened white's structure a little bit you can challenge me on the chess 24 website if you are a premium member so i only take challenges by people who have a premium account on chess 24 one of the privileges that the premium account carries now what are we doing here um he has taken with the f pawn so i would definitely like to prevent him from castling let me see i can play also e5 for bishop c5 check that is probably quite dangerous for black there's also queen to b6 i'm, I'm going to try that simply looking at this diagonal so he's not able to castle away out of the center there were a couple of good moves bishop g4 also looked quite good but um i just want to make sure that he does not get the king out of the center so quickly queen e2 maybe now a reasonable move but then i play e5 and have a good um i think development let's go e5 Well, now I can develop both bishops and bishop to c5 <clears throat> can be it can be a good square yeah for this piece not so easy for white to handle this okay bishop g4 I think is a good tempo yeah let's win this tempo queen to f2 I go bishop c5 win another tempo so i get all the pieces out while white is not making much headway with his game the only thing that is important is uh, if he goes to g3 i have to take into account that maybe the move knight a4 could be an issue but i still have queen a5 check so that's not really a threat all right i did not expect him to go to f1 that just look a little bit odd yeah i have the check that's really important it's a check and the knight is attacked so he has to go back 
and has not made any progress. Oh, that is too early. He probably did not spot that he can just go back. I mean, I'm, I'm happy about my prospects here, but I'm not winning material. No, I can go bishop b4, bishop d4, most like that. Yeah, thanks for the game. Okay, um, let's go and see who is challenging me. Is there anybody new? The nickname master, I've only played once, so that is a good one. I tried to play people that I have not played against all that much, mostly new players. And here, the nickname master, I only played once. There was a request, show us some lines from the Keep It Simple repertoire. This is one of them, the Rosso Nemo. That is um, something that I have suggested to play in Keep It Simple 1E4, the book that is like there, yeah, the yellow and red one. And um, this is what I recommended in the book. This is in fact something that is featured also in Fight Like Magnus from the other side from the black perspective. It's a good mainline opening that you can play from both sides. Knight f6 is a bit weird because I think I can just take the pawn. There's no need to do something fancy, take the material. Um, okay, I think just going back is fine. Knight c4 maybe also possible. Is he trying to provoke me with bishop h5? No, he's not. So how do we develop? A good way is usually to go bishop e3 with a tempo. And now to go for bishop h6 to trade off black's potentially best piece. The bishop on g7 is a piece that benefited a little bit, at least from the blunder of the five pawn. Um, queen d2 was also possible. It's um, yeah. it's um, probably about equal value. I thought that not being in the d file could be something, but it's probably not a big thing. I think about queen b2 now, being on the same diagonal here. Oh, that is an interesting move. I would like to exploit the weak c5 pawn. Queen to e3, for example, that could be good. Let's do that. I usually don't go for rematches in, in a band tablet session. I'd like to play... Um, only once against um, a single opponent, simply to give people more opportunities to play. So, I mean, multiple opponents, the chance to play. That's what I'm trying to say. I regrouped the knight to g3. I would like to get more pressure on that pawn on c5, but a little bit, I'm not quite sure how. A3, B4 could be good. Let's try that. Okay, this is an interesting choice. I keep, I keep getting tons of Skype messages. <laughs> it's all nice, but I'm in the middle of a show, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, they don't know. Oh, wow, somebody has uh, a really... That's a weird color. I cannot even read the name. Okay, now, here. Black needs to check out... Yeah, exactly. He needs to check out some of those more direct tries. But um, this is, I think, easy to handle. I just go back. And now I'm stopping the move c5 for ever, hopefully. 
Yeah, thanks for the message here. Uh, you know, I cannot really read your name. No, I can. Kitty, Kitty, he says, yeah, I remember your name back from the YouTube days. Of course, I'm still doing YouTube, but um, this is how I started. All right, now, how do we do that? I need to make sure that the E4 pawn is not <gasps> the time. I only saw very late, very late that I had absolutely no time. <laughs> oh my God. What? Yeah, rook takes f7 was a bit dirty, but whatever. Whee! That was um, very tricky. I did not look at the clock at all. Oh my good goodness. <laughs> right, now, do I have some new challenges? I guess I, I should have some. It's just a long list. But somehow it doesn't show. It's a little bit laggy currently. So, what about Arthur Fleck? That's a new opponent. Really looking forward when the new play zone will be live. Currently, it is in a, in a better state and uh, it looks really good. It's a bit quicker bit more responsive I'm really looking forward to play using the new software I think I have accepted a challenge but it's kind of here it is against Arthur Fleck going knight f3 it's kind of my my default if I don't really know Anything special, I can go knight f3. Let's see what Arthur or Arthur is doing. d5. Okay, now I can go back to keep it simple. d4, which is the, the green book yeah, behind me. And of course, they're all chessable courses. That's how they all started. So it looks like we're getting a Catalan. Maybe not. We'll see. If black now takes on c4, that is a Catalan. If he takes on d4, it's, well, whoop, don't know. Just not a good line. And bishop e7 would be the Tarash. Okay, here I play knight e5, which is a tricky continuation. In some cases, I really got knight takes d4 when e3 wins a chunk of material. Knight takes e5 is also good for white, but I keep forgetting why. <laughs> I've written everything in that book, but I keep forgetting why. The actual best move is bishop d7. Let's see what Arthur is playing. This is five minute chess. I have a bit more time. Yeah, 
Yeah, knight takes d4, there's e3, and if the knight moves, it doesn't matter really where, I can take d8 and win. Yes, he played it. Um, and now what? Knight a3, yeah? Yes, you do, you do forget stuff. This is actually the main benefit of doing opening training on their chessable website because you get, using this space repetition, you get um, to learn the things continuously, repeat them. This is actually extremely helpful. Um, the thing is, as with every kind of exercise, you have to do it regularly and um, I, for that matter, I don't really learn my own repertoires. It's kind of, I write them and I don't repeat the things. Um, if I would, I would definitely not forget them all that frequently, but I'm just um, always working on new stuff. So I'm not really repeating and learning what I have already written, always doing something new. Yes, um, in that, um, in the keep it simple D4, I'm relying mostly on Fianchetto setups like this one. Now, what's going on in this particular situation? I can take B7 in this uh, position, I think. Yeah, why not take it? Shanklin said, never play an opening with an animal or exchange variation in it. That's funny. The, the animal thing is well known, right? All the books named after animals are bad. The exchange variation thing is not so clear to me. Okay, if I take here. I'm attacking the rook on a8, like for an exchange win, and the d7 bishop is attacked. The orangutan is good. Oh, good in what sense? Like it doesn't lose immediately? Maybe white can equalize with one before, but it's close. It's a close call. Yeah, I think black is just dropping, dropping stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm going to take the exchange, I guess. Um, yes, there's a mention of the kangaroo opening. This is, however, somewhat uncommon name for this opening. The kangaroo is d4, e6, c4, bishop, b4, check. And uh, this I would usually call uh, Keras defense. And this is a good opening indeed. Yeah, I've played that a lot. It's, it's essentially um, um, a modified Bogo Indian and there's nothing wrong with it at all. And if you want to call it the kangaroo, I've heard that name. You could say that the kangaroo is a fine opening. Yeah, that's possible. I actually think that d4, e6, c4, bishop, b4, check would be a relatively um, popular line on any level if somehow the laws of chess would forbid 2e4 for the French. Because the French people usually, like the top guys, don't want to play. Not because it's terrible, but just because there's not a huge incentive to do it. Mm. 
the exchange caro can should be a decent version of the cards but for black yes that's true yeah the exchange caro this is a an opening uh, line that has gained quite a bit in popularity recently one reason um reason is wrong but if, if you look at magnus's games he plays that very well um, somebody recently had this statement on in one of the streams that Magnus is the only player who would understand the Carlsbad uh, structures. I'm not sure that this is probably a little bit too much, but it's not wrong to state that he understands them very well. Yeah, here I'm going to probably win on time. Just have a huge, okay, if I take that as bishop d4, which is not ideal. F5. Again, due to the time, it's not so relevant. Maybe I then e4 is, e4 is particularly stupid. Okay, come on. This is the pragmatic solution. given that the time situation is the way it is so the ending might be a draw objectively but he's not able to prove that in two seconds yeah thanks for the game Arthur Fleck I think Magnus plays the Carlsbad structures excellently with both sides, but he plays the, let's say, the white side of the Karo exchange um, fantastically well. I think I have accepted this game. I'm not currently planning to write any endgame books. Um, I'm always recommending the 100 Endgames um, You Must Know by Jesus de la Via and for very strong players already um, I would recommend Duretsky's Endgame Manual. Just takes a moment until that game starts, I'm sorry. I think it's currently processed. Here it is. Gustafsson Gambit is my opponent. He played knight f3. I go g6. Bishop g7. Um, let's see. Who's going to win the Magnus Invitational? Yeah, it's not a difficult prediction that that Magnus is the heavy favorite. It also seems that he adapts um, quite well to the specifics of the online format. He scored very well. I think they, they will have some kind of um, playoff knockout uh, stage. And of course, um, it doesn't really matter that Magnus is leading at the moment or something like that. You just have to get to the knockout um, phase wow there are so many messages I can barely keep up nice for being so active in the chat but I, I hope you are you understand that I might not um, answer every single question and I also have to play the game and do something or tell, tell you something reasonable about it if possible here I'm just trying to get the bishop I'm a simple person I just want the bishop pair and then I'm happy at least a bit and if he is a fan of Jan uh, he should probably not give up his bishop but now difficult 
Isn't the hippo playable? Yes, it is playable. Yes. It's not a terribly bad opening. It's also not something you should probably do every day. But it's um, one of the better animal openings. <laughs> animal name openings. Okay. Is um, Alireza Fruja going to be the world champion? A good question. I recently spoke to um, a workmate, basically, of mine. And he has a bet going that Ferrugia will become the world champion in the next five years. I would bet against that just on percentages, but I wouldn't bet against the overall likelihood of that happening. So I think um, if you look at all the players that we like know of at the moment, he's got the best shot. Okay, so uh, how do you evaluate Nakamura's performance nowadays? That's an interesting question. Am I qualified to say something there? Um, it's tough to say. Um, I mean, um, Hikaru is very, very much a streamer nowadays. He's uh, doing hour long streams, very long streams on Twitch. And um, I recently watched one, and I think I watched some of his streams um, maybe a year ago or longer like that, not quite sure. And um, I did not like those streams. I have to be perfectly honest, like a year ago or something like that, because I felt he's not um, really giving too much um, explanations about the games. I just felt like this is not really what it should be like. But then I tuned in last week and I thought it was an excellent stream. He was doing really nice um, commentary and he was very responsive to all to the chat and so on. It was really an excellent stream. So, um, and um, he's doing very well um, streaming. I mean, if you look at the subscription counts and so on, this is just something that costs a lot of time. So you cannot stream like 10 hours a day and at the same time fight for the world championships uh, in classical in classical chess, let's say. So we have a tactic coming, knight f4. I can take that because there's a fork on e2. So... I think um, Hikaru is mostly focusing on his streaming today and not so much about like improving the nice one, a nice fork. Um, he's not really focusing on, like, say, becoming the, the classical time control world champion or something like that, which he definitely uh, tried to do some years ago. With some justification, I mean, he he was a 2,800 player in classical, but he's focusing on streaming and um, he's good at it. It's just what it is, very very much. Uh, so okay, let's see what to do. Let's go rook f8. Let's. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a queen up, so I don't really need to do something. Let's check. And why, do I, why am I doing that? That wasn't a good move. I mean, I, I'm so much material up that it didn't matter, but it's made next. Yeah, thanks for the game, Gustafsson Gambit. I don't think there's an opening called Gustafsson Gambit, but uh, okay. So, let's have a really high-rated opponent, pawn holder, grandmaster opponent. Let's see what he's going to do. No, I did not read that book that you, that you mentioned. There are so many books around.
Yeah, this line I have covered in keep it simple D4. Let's see. This ending is interesting. Knight E4, interesting. Very early knight E4. H3, G4. Well, the bishop is good on f4. That makes quite some sense, I, I think. And now what? 92. I do read the YouTube chat. Absolutely. It's just like there are so many messages coming that I might not spot every single one of them. I try to. Um... Nepo next world champion for sure. I would bet against that. Mm, okay, that's an interesting position. He's currently, he's not threatening to take on f4 really. But I would like to position the knight on d4. This is not easily possible. No, my position doesn't look horrible. Not at all. Maybe I can take and play b3 and then f4. I'm threatening f4, f5. The, the key... The thing that could happen is something like d4 or knight d3 immediately. It's interesting. Knight b4 now is just a mistake, I think, because f5 is good for white. It's, it's a difficult position, I'm not quite sure. When I say that, I would bet against Nepo becoming world champion. I'm not saying he's a bad player or anything. It's just that he's the same generation as Magnus is and he, he is worse than him. And then I don't see him becoming better than Magnus really in classical. And um, this is the thing. Uh, okay. You rarely um, see the stronger player losing a world championship match. It really doesn't happen often. So first the check. And now, really difficult. This is hanging. Bishop f1, there's rook d8. Yeah, it happened. Kasparov lost to Kramnik. I don't think that Kramnik is really, you could say that he is the weaker player in some way. Um, but yeah, definitely Kasparov was the favorite. But Kasparov was less of a favorite than Magnus would be against Nepo. You are losing, in, uh, says the Facebook chat. I am not seeing it yet. I'm, I might lose to b3 pawn, but not sure if the position is lost. I don't think so. He has not yet um, organized his king side. Oh, I did not see that move coming. Very tricky move.
Yeah, that's not a move you want to play, right? But I didn't see how I'm saving, at least for the moment, the material. Yeah, he outplayed me nicely from that position, I think. Yeah, that's that's good one. And now he sees also getting the rook into the game. Yeah. This is also lost, but It's a bit of a better try than some of the other moves. Check here and then take B7. Yeah, okay. It was nicely played by Black. So uh, there are a couple of questions that um, that I cannot really answer all of them because I had to look at the, look at the game. <laughs> it was a very strong opponent. It would be interesting to learn when my position um, was getting worse because I'm really not sure about that. Like roughly, roughly here, the, the situation is not not clear to me yeah? the the black king is on f8 rook on h8 that um it doesn't look great for black but he also has his his uh, positive points in the position for sure um maybe here is a critical moment or here this is very interesting it could be that um, I need to be more precise in this position. For example, a move like b3 it could be an idea. Tough to say, it's difficult, very difficult. Okay, now, um, got so many challenges here. That is a non-premium, a non-premium has to, uh, maybe. So, here we go. There was a question there that I think is interesting. Um, how did Kasparov have the highest rating for so many years? Was his chess on another level at this time? Um, I think um, there's a good explanation for that because um, Kasparov was the number one player for a very long time. Like starting from the, let's say, mid 80s, 19 became world champion in 1985 and um, was basically number one or one, number one, number two, whatever. There were one or two lists where he tied with Kromnik um, till the mid 2000s, 2004, 2005. Um, I think he was obviously extremely strong as a, just as a, as a player, but he was, um, um, light years ahead of his peers when it came to uh, preparation using the computer. And this is something that has leveled out nowadays. They all know, um, they all know nowadays how to prepare, how to use computers and so on. And Kasparov was far ahead uh, of his time. He had many, many games that he just won right out of the opening, getting positions that were not like winning, but they were simply um, completely playing into his strength. There were tournaments back then, let's say in the late 1990s, where he was winning every almost every black game in the night off because he was so, so much better prepared. And this is... Um, not the case nowadays anymore. They all know what to do. And um, it's not this kind of disparity in preparation. For example, uh, I'm totally sure that when we look at the matches, let me think about this for a moment. 
Yeah, C6. We look at the matches against Karpov. Kasparov was using chess base from the very, very beginning, uh, databases and then engines. And um, I mean, Karpov, it was uh, very obvious when he uh, played in the, in the Monaco events. There were those events sponsored by Job van Osterom when they played blindfold chess. They had to, they had to uh, enter the, the, the moves on, on the screen, which was blank. So they just had the blank chessboard and with, with the mouse, they had to enter on a blank chessboard their moves. And Karpov couldn't even handle a mouse. He, he didn't know how to work on a computer with a mouse. And that was in the mid 1990s when Kasparov was using chess base for years. Of course, they have their seconds and so on, but that's just a huge difference. If you kind of, you know, I think it's pretty clear what, what kind of a difference that makes. And if you take that advantage uh, on top of being the best player anyway, that makes you completely crushing. Um, okay. When I'm telling this story against a good opponent, I played quite strange stuff and probably not very good stuff. Let's see. I mean, you wonder what uh, my king side is doing. That's a bit loose. My idea with rook g8 was to play d5. I'm not sure if that makes any sense. Could be by far too loose. Okay. This looks odd. <laughs> um, Kramnik uh, dethroned Kasparov with heavy preparation. I would not um, agree with that. Um, at least um, it's a matter of uh, definition. I think the the use of the Berlin and the general match strategy was absolutely genius. Somebody wrote that preparation part in the chat. And um, that was the kind of preparation that was working fantastically well against this opponent. Because Kasparov really um, had issues with, uh, with the opening, couldn't quite find the right way to approach it. It was just not the kind of preparation that, um, let's say there's a concrete problem that needs to be solved. And that was more of Kasparov's preparation. He found very sharp stuff, often checked it with the computer and then um, yeah, got quality-wise good positions that were perfectly suited for his sharp playing style. And um, Kromnik thinking of the Berlin as the the weapon of choice for this match is uh, was a fantastic, fantastic call. Okay. Why did Kasparov continue playing the Spanish during the match? That was a big mistake, yes, but we know now, <laughs> back in the day, he was principled. He wanted to play his stuff. Um, I would bet against that. There's a statement in the chat that every person with decent intelligence will become a master in no time if he studies with computers for two years. Um, you, you probably have to define master a little bit. If, if you if you say two, 2,200, I would bet against that. It, um, you, you, you'd, it, it's difficult, it's really difficult to get to that level.
Okay, that's a good move. My knight is hanging. And oh, it's a bit loose, everything. Knight e4, bishop d4, that I don't want to do. And the check here. Ah, I can actually play that. King f1, king g7 does work. As king e2, queen c2 check is, is a thing. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if you use a computer or not. The issue is that even if somebody is extremely intelligent, they might not have the right kind of intelligence for chess. It's a, it's a very specific skill set. And I know people who are extremely intelligent, but they just suck at chess. They just suck at it for whatever reason. They don't suck at mathematics or languages or something else, but they suck at in particular at chess. I don't know why, but it's a specific skill set. You might disagree, but you, you might not have the experience as a coach that I have because I have met those people. And it's often a bit of a sad experience for them because they are actually really smart, but somehow they cannot do chess on a really good level. Let's mate. Ooh. It was tough. All right. Yeah, Kapov's level of playing uh, was extremely, extremely high. He didn't really use computers all that much at the time. He relied on seconds telling him stuff. Okay, playing Arrest Wovk, or is that Orest? I don't know. Why is he playing those strange openings? And still having 2800, that's really funky. It looks like a strange Alakine's defense. Interesting. Yes, Kasparov had his first tournaments in the late 1970s. That's true. Bishop f6, okay. Why can't they be good? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a, a, a specialist in, um, in uh, I don't know, this is probably something that um, people with some background in, in, what is that called? Neurology, like understanding how the brain works. This is what I'm trying to say. Have to answer what the specific skill set is for chess. It's just my experience. I have met plenty of very intelligent people, but they, some of them, they adapt very well to chess and some of them don't. Yeah, 
neuroscience and cognitive science. Yeah, this sounds right. Okay, um, how, how do we play this position? Bishop g5 could be interesting. Or bishop f4. Or whatever. <laughs> Many things. Okay, he's attacking this one, and I don't want to give that up. Um, taking on b6 is not terrible. The position looks so bad for black that you, you are looking for an immediate kill, but I don't see it. Only have fifty seconds. I have to focus a little bit and ignore the chat for a moment because my low time and I, I'd like to punish bad play, like openings like that should not survive. And I didn't really refute it, which I should have. Trying to put some pressure on the d6 pawn. It's always a bit frustrating because he plays openings that are absolutely terrible and then he plays like fantastically strong and somehow keeps those bad positions together. Got a small advantage in this position, but nothing special. Offered me a draw. I took it. Wow, how can I refute this opening? I mean, like here it looks like black is close to resignation, but I didn't find it. I originally wanted to play the check, but I think he can get away with g6. I mean, it looks awful, but it might still work. Or does that actually work? I can actually take here, right? Because here I am material up. That is probably a thing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the game. Arrest. Or is that Orest? Orest Wofk. So who else is on? Ruben Zalimo. Why not? or five minute both is fine let's go Ruben or not <laughs> we'll see
place a red here, opening d4. I should have played d4. That's actually a bit better, I think. It's extremely difficult to um, compare older generation chess players and their playing level with today's players. But um, it is interesting. I today got a new book, actually. This one. I had it in the mail today. The, on the Origin of Good Moves by Willy Hendricks. I'm very curious about this book. I think if I see that correctly, Willy is looking at uh, many historic games and kind of pieces together the development of chess over the ages. Um, interesting. We'll see what he has in store. He's a very uh, interesting and um, in, in some cases non-conventional thinker about chess. Yes, I played in the quarantine, quarantine, quarantine is the right one. League team battle some days ago. Is this something official or just for fun? Well, it, it's probably, hopefully for fun. But, um, I mean, people just want to find new things to do while they're sitting at home and playing some league chess or league type of chess um, certainly part of it a good game here by Ruben I'm not happy about my position I think I must have made some smallish mistakes knight b6 that looks awkward rook b8 Rook b8, he's got bishop a6 maybe. Let's see, 6. Uh, I can go rook a7 maybe. It's a look a bit odd, but. Um, I have not yet, I have seen that Grandmaster Daniel Hausrat, a friend of mine, has published a new book on the double fianchetto, but I don't, I don't have it yet. It, um, I, I messaged him about it and it's in the mail. Not particularly happy about this position. Very well played by my opponent. Queen d8, this rook takes e6. That's a bit of a pain. I have to get rid of that bloody queen. I, d I played the Slav <laughs> and uh, he exchanged. It's not a very fearsome line, the Slav exchange, but he did, he did well. And of course, with hindsight, um, something else would have been a bit more, a bit more interesting. I can just take that. Oops. Knight on d6 is right. Okay, now I can fight for the c file with rook c8 and potentially b6. I have to watch the time. I only have 29 seconds. It's 
It's got the check on E5 and not. Wow. What are you doing to me? Make some mistakes, please. <laughs> really playing this very well. It's just too slow. Yeah, I will win on time. He played really well. Absolutely. Just just too slowly. Just too slowly. I drifted into a somewhat bad position in that symmetrical position. So I, I somehow never completely coordinated. I mean some somewhere here my position is I think okay, but it's pretty unattractive, of course. It shouldn't have happened. Yeah, thanks for the game, Ruben. Very well played, in my opinion. Now, um, what about the time? I still have like 15 minutes, so better take that time, put it to good use. Let's play the GM Crusher 31. He is a new opponent. Can I do, I can play a pre-move, one G6. Um, I have um, two C4 based repertoires, one video series on chess 24 and one on chessable. Those are identical. I'm working on a new one C4 based opening course for chessable, which will probably feature very similar lines but updated of course and it will also have um, yeah more annotations and so on I tried to do something else here I'm playing the the hippo as earlier discussed not so bad but it's not my typical brand of chess <laughs> and I'm not really doing too greatly here bishop to a6 maybe okay that's an interesting situation My a5 pawn is currently attacked. Hmm, I don't quite see a good solution here. I can take the b5 knight, but uh, I don't like to do that. Let's do this. My dear is knight to b6, d5, knight c4, using that weak c4 square. Not sure that this actually will work at the end, but that's my idea. My c7 pawn is pretty weak. If he just attacks it, let's say queen c2, how am I covering that? Mm, I'm not, huh? I'm just not covering it. I 
I try to play this position. The, the idea is simply to regain b5 with a move like knight a3, for example, attacking the rook and the pawn. Not happy about all this, of course, but I, I, I didn't see anything really good available. You know, maybe this one. Rook a4, rook b5, as I think... This could still be playable. I mean, not <laughs> playable in a sense that I'm happy about everything, but maybe it's still a, a fighting chance. Rook b2, attack the knight. I got a check now and here. This this should win some stuff, huh? Yeah, it wins some material. <clears throat> the rook is always looking at the knight. Yeah. That was really good for, for you. GM Crusher 31. Ah. So, um, I think I can get in one more game, probably a three minute game, the Finn King 4, maybe. Let's go. I can go E4, let's. Yeah, that probably is true for many people. In the chat, Clive says, watched so many chess in the last three weeks, and now he has to go back to work on Monday. Where do you live? That working on Monday is, is on again. So both moves do make some sense. Playing the H3 Nidorf. Yeah, I think in Germany we also have some uh, changes in the lockdown regulations, but I Manchester, England, okay. Yeah, the knight on f5 now is a truly annoying piece for black. You always, you cannot tolerate this for a long time, this piece. And at the same time, you don't want to take because e takes f5 here, yeah, opens up the bishop on g2. Pretty, <clears throat> pretty annoying. And I have two good options here. I can... Castle queenside or kingside, both um, is very dangerous. Queenside looks a little bit more natural to me To Why is that a move? Aren't you just going back after a3? <clears throat> I guess so. Oh, my prediction for Nakamura, Nepomyashi, and Ding versus Giri. I would go for Ding versus Giri. I think he, Giri is not um, in good shape. It doesn't look like in that tournament. Um, and Naka versus Nepo. Wow, I don't know. It seems fairly open to me. D5 is a pretty amazing move. So A takes B4, he wants to go D4, I guess. Wow, okay.
Wow. Hmm. Yeah, it's the last game. Absolutely. Maybe add d6 instead. That's a very funky position here, really. Very well defended by the Finn King. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, maybe it had, a <coughs> sorry, maybe there was a problem somewhere, but I didn't spot it. Here we can take on b4, and I mean, I'm not sure what my threat is here. Knight h6 is just a check, it's not winning. I want to go d6 yeah, and, and cut off on the 6th rank. But I'm absolutely unsure what black's move now is. The rook is hanging. And wow. Whoa, okay. Queen g4 doesn't work. Have to move quickly. Knight c3 is the idea. Wow! And you're sitting there with 2,000? Really? Oh my goodness. So I won on time. <laughs> oh my god, that was a crazy game. <laughs> I have no clue what was going on. Okay, guys, I, I got the message that I should uh, clear the stream here because the um, um, preps for the Magnus Carlsen tournament has to be done, and uh, you need uh, they need um, software there that I should not block. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream. It was uh, lots of activity in the chat, more than I actually could master at the same time. Tomorrow will be a German language stream at two in the afternoon. Hope you join if you understand German or want to learn. Please join me tomorrow and um, yeah, keep tuned in for the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. Bye bye guys.